thank you for this time that you have given to us. Thank you for gathering us together with one purpose, and that is to honor you, to worship you. We pray, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide us as we study your words. We ask for empowerment for your servant, Bill, as he delivers your words to us. We pray that you will give us an open heart, open mind, to accept the truth that comes from your word and help us that we can apply this in our life. Thank you that when we found you, Lord, we found everything. You are the joy of our heart. And thank you that Amen. when we give our life to you, we will be happy Amen. despite that. We know that we'll be encountering troubles in life, but we have the assurance of Father God that you are the God that will help us and you are the God that will lift us up and you are the God that will honor our faith in you. Forgive us for the many sins that we have committed. We also pray for our other brethren who are on their way, Lord. We ask you to bless them and encourage them that they will arrive here safely and with gladness and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Amen. title of the message today, uh, Radical Transformation Through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And I've uh, kind of decided to structure this uh, a little different than I have done in the past. So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to do things just a little bit different. So what I want to do is I want to open with a kind of a short story first. Um, and it will tie in very neatly with the message today. And uh, this story is kind of about me and my uh, brother. Now when I say my brother, I need to be a little more specific. It's the brother I grew up with because I now have three brothers. One is adopted by my uh, father and his second wife. Who's a, he's a millennial. And then my father had another child with his second wife who is a, a Gen Y. And so he's very young. And so I have all the other three brothers, two of whom I did not grow up with, the one that I did grow up with. So when I talk about my brother, I'm talking about the one that I actually grew up with. He's about four years younger than me. So like a lot of young men, we <coughs> misspent portions of our youth. <laughs> And uh, I'm thankful to say we didn't misspend it on, you know, partying, drugs, alcohol, women, things like that. We kind of misspent parts of our youth messing around with old cars. And uh, specifically, the ones we were uh, messing around with had some a product of the era we grew up in. So there's an era in automotive history, it's called the Malaise era. And I understand that every one of you has no idea what that means, so let me briefly explain it. It's a period of time when the government was putting pressure on the automotive industry to meet these ever-increasing stringent emission standards. And because of that, the vehicle's performance suffered severely because they were not prepared for the you know, new technology that was coming out uh, to meet these standards. So they had to make do with what they had for a couple of years. And the result was you had these massive engines that displaced, in some cases, greater than seven liters of displacement, putting out ludicrously low horsepower figures. And this is what my brother and I were forced to fool around with. Why? Because they were accessible to us is what we could afford. And what we found is we spent thousands of dollars throwing parts at these engines and all these other things and tinkering and tuning. And what we discovered was we ended up with a very expensive and still very slow car. <laughs> and so what we found out was that in order to get the performance that we were looking for out of these vehicles, we had to 
radically transformed them. That meant we had to go deep into the engine, deep into the guts of the thing, rip it out completely and redo it. And so we eventually learned to do that. Um, I think I did mine first, he did his second because he obviously is younger than me. And so we finally learned how to do that and the results were actually quite pleasing to us. We ended up having our, you know, the first engines we ever rebuilt together um, came out wonderfully and they were performing the way we wanted to. So that's what we, when we're, when we're sinners, that's what we need. We need that radical transformation. We need God to come in and rip out all that old garbage that's in us and transform us from the inside out, just like those old engines were in those cars. Uh, okay? Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, well, what, what is that? What is transformation through Jesus Christ? What does that look like? Well, as always, we should always consult with Scripture because that's where we get the best answers, okay? So I found two good Scriptures about that. Both of them are in 2 Corinthians. The first one will be in chapter 3, verse 18. I've got it written on your handout for you. And that first one says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the second one, Corinthians 5.17, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, it means that when we are being radically transformed uh, through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we are becoming more like Christ. Okay? Amen. Everything about us begins to mirror Christ. Now, do we do it perfectly? No. My goodness, we fail miserably every day at it. Okay? <laughs> but there, the important thing is, is that it's through the power of the Holy Spirit we are doing that. It's, yeah. it's a gradual process. Yeah. And so we find that everything, our speech, our demeanor, our attitudes, our habits, our expectations our goals, they all begin to slowly reflect Christ and what he asks us to do. He came and acted as the example for us. We are to mirror that. As it said in that one scripture, it said, Every, it's a beholding in the mirror, the glory of the Lord. So it's like we're trying to become like a mirror image of Christ, okay? Now, because we are still attached to our fallen flesh with all of its lusts and all of its problems and all of its uh, issues, shall we say, so we're constantly being dragged by that. But that's why, thankfully, we have the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells within us. And that's what helps us to overcome these, you know, fallen flesh issues that we have, okay? It's a, it's a slow process. It's a, it's a constant process. It's a process that we do all the way up to the day that we die and leave this earthly body behind and go to meet the Lord in glory in our new glorified body. So... What is the evidence of transformation through Christ and the Holy Spirit? What does that look like exactly? Well, what I did was I created several talking points, and I'm going to address each of them. This is, once again, one of those times where I probably could have listed 150 things, but for the sake of, you know, everyone here, and you're, uh, you know, I know you're hungry, so <laughs> we're looking forward to the food we have here, so I don't want to spend, you know, a, a little lengthy list on that. But we're, I just covered some, uh, I call them the important things. We're going to go over those here. So letter A, the first thing I've listed is, your sins become fewer, right? Yes. Are we totally free of sin? No. Yep. And if we tell Jesus we're, we're free of sin, we make a liar out of ourselves and him. Okay, so we can't say that. What happens is our sins become fewer. We still mess up. We just don't mess up as often as we used to. And when we do mess up, whether it be through, you know, inadvertent bad habit or because we made a choice we shouldn't have made, we feel bad about it. It's not like before. When you were an unsaved sinner, okay, you would sin without even a thought. It wouldn't bother you. You, you know, it, it didn't bother you that you were sinning and you would just do it like a, you know, uh, be, that sin became like a habit. But when you become saved, all of a sudden, that sin loses its luster. Because now you're being convicted. Your, your, your conscience, for the first time, is really working the way it should. And you're being convicted of that sin. And that's why your sins become fewer, because now they're, they're losing their, their uh, luster. And that's one of the things that's going to lead into uh, letter B here. The old sins no longer have the same thrill. Now, it doesn't matter what that sin was. It could have been, you know, getting drunk with your buddies. It could have been going to the, you know, track and betting and gambling. It could have been looking at pornography on the computer. It could have been any number of things. When you were a, a lost sinner... That sin brought you a lot of joy. It brought you a lot of, you know, pleasure, although it was a fleeting pleasure. And that's why you wanted more and more and more of it, okay? 
But now you've saved, you've become saved. The Holy Spirit's coming to you, you've been led to the scriptures, you've read them, you understand that a little more of the God that created you, and now you're beginning to slowly wake up and have your eyes open to things. And what will happen is you may stray back to those old sins. Well, you know what you find? Yeah, it's not fun anymore. It doesn't have the same enjoyment anymore. It's, it, and plus, it bothers you now that you do it. You may do it and get a little bit of pleasure out of it, but then you realize afterwards you feel terrible. And that, that way you feel afterwards does not, it, it's not worth the pleasure you had before. And so what happens is slowly those begin to finally fade into the background. It's uh, one of the ways, that I'll put it the way that John MacArthur put it in one of his sermons. You're not a party animal anymore. <laughs> and I thought that was humorous hearing John MacArthur use the term party animal. But that's what it's like. It's like you no longer have that desire to commit those sins anymore. Because now you have none other than the Holy Spirit has come to dwell within you. And your conscience is now working and clicking the way it's supposed to. Okay? And this is an extremely valuable evidence that now you're being transformed in Christ. Letter C. Temptations are increasingly easier to resist. This also ties into the first two items. Okay, Remember, we still have this fallen flesh attached to us. It's like, remember when Lazarus came out of the grave? He's alive, but he still had those stinking grave clothes attached to him. That's kind of like a good picture for our condition. We're saved. We've been washed in Christ's blood. We're all nice and shiny new on the inside, but on the outside, we're still dragging around our old fallen flesh. And that's going to haunt us and bother us for the rest of our living days. The question is to how we, how we subdue that. Through the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, we can learn to subdue that flesh. And that's why... These temptations that once used to snare us like instantly, now we give it a couple thoughts. We say, well, I don't want to do that. And then we turn away from that temptation. And the more often we do that, the more the devil is going to flee from us. Because why? He can't snare you anymore in that sin like he used to. It used to be that all he had to do was lay the trap out. You'd fall right into it like a total fool, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're saved, that's not happening anymore. You see that trap. You can see it being set in your mind. Like the, the, the enemy is constantly whispering wicked thoughts into our, our ears. And we have to be on guard of those. We have to crush them thoughts before they become an action. Because that's how it goes. It becomes, a, it's a thought. And then you ponder the thought. And then comes the motion. The evil motion, as it's called. Yeah. Like that's the step of how we fall into sin. But if we can nip it in the bud right when the temptation arrives, through the power of Christ and the Holy Spirit, that's the good thing. That's what we want to do. We want to reach that point where we can do that. So as you're growing in, in Christ and you're growing in holiness and you're bearing fruit for, for him, these temptations are no longer going to uh, cause you to stumble. Now, letter D says you value the things God values. Okay, when you were a lost sinner, what did you value? Things, power, recognition. These are all the things that you wanted when you were a lost sinner. But now that you're saved, you have a different mentality. You have a different view of things. You value things like charity. You see a fellow man in need and you want to help him. You don't just turn a blind eye like, oh, I can't do that. No, no, no. No, now you want to reach out to the person that needs help. You also look at things differently. Like, for example, when you're in church, um, the words coming out of the, the pastor's mouth are now more uh, meaningful to you. And you can see how they apply to your life. You want to become active in your church. You want to volunteer. You want to get involved in things. You want to engage in the activities that are there. Whereas before, you kind of would shut yourself away. If you were if you were still a lost sinner, but yet you were attending church out of whatever, an obligation or a sense of guilt or whatever the reason may be, that's what you were doing. You were maybe were shunning those things. But it, and so now, now that you have been saved, you're now engaging yourself with these things. We have a new uh, person that's joined us tonight. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Now, let's take a look at letter E, because this is a big one. You demonstrate righteous anger with Christ's dishonor. I think I spoke this briefly in one of our uh, past meetings. Okay, 99% of our anger is unrighteous. Why? Because it's born of pride. It's born of things like, that person offended me, now I'm going to get even. Or it's born of something like, uh, you feel like you were slighted. That's where our anger is, is born of. It's born of pride. Okay, that's not righteous. Righteous anger, when you are when you are saved and you recognize what Christ has done for you, 
now you've become sensitive to the fact that people are out there and they're blaspheming your Savior. Okay? Or they are uh, saying things that are not biblical. Or things like that. And then you find yourself the, with the need to want to defend your Savior. And it wells up within you a kind of anger. You know, I'm not talking like a, a furious anger where you're, you know, throwing things around and wanting to get involved in fisticuffs with people. But you are demonstrating the kind of righteous anger that Christ did when he was going through the temple and saw how it was being abused, the house of God, and he overturned the money changers and told them to get out because it was a house of prayer, not a place where you could buy and sell. Okay? That's the kind of righteous anger that Christ wants us to have whenever he or God or the Holy Spirit has been dishonored in some way. And one way that Christ is being dishonored right now out in California is, I don't know if you heard about this or not, but John MacArthur spoke about it. So, Governor Gavin Newsom has basically, he wants to make California like the abortion capital of the United States. He has basically announced to the whole world, I'm flinging open the doors for everybody, the whole country, to come to California and have all the abortions you want. And he's put up billboards advertising this, like it's some kind of a service, right? And in this billboard, he is actually quoting the Bible. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, now that's got to be the ultimate dishonor of Christ. How you can take the words of Christ and use them to justify murder yeah. of an infant. I mean, that is just, that's the ultimate blasphemy as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about how you all feel about that, but I know John MacArthur was so disturbed by it. He actually penned a letter to Gavin Newsom telling him how distressing he thought this was and how he re recognized the fact that, you know, let's be honest here, Gavin Newsom's soul is in peril. Okay, I mean, when you're a leader of, a, of, a, of an entire state and you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you are, are advocating such a thing like this, such a grievous sin, mm -hmm. well, that's putting a target on your back mm -hmm. from the Almighty above. Yes. He sees that and he's very displeased. Mm -hmm. and he's going to, you know, the, the clock is ticking for Gavin Newsom. You know, the, the hour to repent is right now. Mm -hmm. And I pray that he takes it. And I know uh, John MacArthur prays he takes it too. That's why he sent him the letter in the first place. So when we see things like that in our world that are dishonoring Christ, that makes us well up with a righteous anger. And it makes us want to defend mm -hmm. Christ. Now, obviously, you know, Christ is Almighty God. Mm -hmm. He can defend himself. We know that. But... It pleases him to know that we love him so much that we're willing to stand up for him down here. It, it, that means a lot to him. It's, it, it does. So we all need to always remember that. That we should always demonstrate and defend Christ when he is dishonored. Letter F says, you discover yourself giving thanks and praise to God often, even for the little simple things in life. Amen. This is very true, I know, in my own personal case. I mean, I found myself just giving thanks for the, the, the ordinary, everyday things. Like, you know, I got my cup of coffee in the morning. I'm waking up, and I have somewhere constructive to go that day. I have, you know, my job to do. Um, there's a beautiful sunrise to look at in the morning. When I go outside at, at my lunch break, I have food waiting for me in a cooler provided for me by my ability to go out and, you know, earn a living because God gave me that ability. And these are all the things I began to give thanks for. And then, of course, I'm always thankful for the major things. My wife, for example, best blessing I ever received from God above. Amen. 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 Our, amen. Yes. Yes, the big amen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we also have our new home we just got, you know. And, yes. And, you know, and I also recognize, I told my wife this, too. I also recognize that, okay, you know, as much as we love our little house, it's a sweet little place. We like it a lot. But it's like everything else in this world. It's subject to the decay of the fallen world. It wears out. And so as much as we enjoy that, we must always remember that God has prepared for us a house in heaven that will never wear out. That's never going to be subject to the decay of this fallen and troubled world. And that's where our ultimate hope should always be. When, when God gives us something like, you know, a spouse or a home or a vehicle here on earth, it's to use here. He expects us to be a good steward of it. He expects us to give uh, him thanks for it because why he helped us. He gave us the ability to go get that. He provided that for us. And so anytime we give thanks to God for these things that we have been blessed with in our life, we're doing his will because he expects us to give gratitude to him for these good things. Because we already know all good things come from God, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Letter G. This is an important one. I especially found this in my life too as well. I'm sure you did as well. Yeah. There's a kind of peace in your life to fight the worldly chaos. 
I'll be honest, now this gets tried quite hard on my current employment, employment, okay? That's not an easy place to find peace, believe me. But what you do find is that as you grow in your relationship with Christ, as you're growing spiritually, as you are bearing more fruit, the chaos affects you less and less and less. Yes. And one of the other ways you have peace in your life despite the chaos is you're able to shut out a lot of the chaos because why you get convicted of a lot of things mm -hmm. you know like for example I, okay, I haven't watched TV in going on five years now hate it can't stand it, it to me it, I, I, the sound coming out of that idiot box is is like it's just noise to me I can't stand the sound of it so I'm grateful that I've now have the, the, the strength and the conviction to completely shut television out of my life I don't need it anymore I don't want it anymore you know, the internet allows you to be vastly more selective. So you can choose what you're going to look at and choose what you're going to see. Now, let's be honest, you can also mess up really bad and view things that are a lot worse. But hopefully you're convicted enough in Christ that you won't do that. Okay. But that's what I have found. And I remember like in the process of when I was becoming saved, it, it didn't happen all at once. It happened like in stages. You know, I was in the most lowest troubled time of my life and I found myself reaching for the scriptures. Now, I didn't do that on my own volition. That was God leading me to do that. Because remember, yeah. we're taught in the Bible that we cannot act on for God on our own. God tells us that we can't do that. We're incapable of doing it. We're incapable of seeking God out on our own. Because why? Because we're fallen. We're fleshly. We want to go after the, the lusts of the world. We want to go after the pleasures of the world. That's our natural inclination. So when we find ourselves all of a sudden realizing my life's a mess. I, I, I'm scared of what's going to happen to me. I need help. I'm desperate. And you find yourself reaching for that Bible at that moment in your life. That's when you realize that's the Lord leading you to do that. That's the Lord recognizing. That's the Lord um, acting in your life and you recognizing that you need help. And the Lord is now using that as the vessel and the vehicle to re lead you to him. He's doing the work. He's reaching out to you. But it's up to you now to open your eyes and be drawn in. And we know that uh, when God chooses us to be saved, we can never be snatched out of his hand because he's drawn us in and drawn us in and drawn us in. And we will never be snatched out of his hand, just like it says in those scriptures. And I found that what happened with me was as I'm reading the scriptures and they're finally making sense for the first time in my life, it was amazing. It's like opening up and the Bible suddenly became a whole new book. When I was a lost sinner, the Bible was this dusty old book of stories that just laid on the table. Now all of a sudden I recognize this is the word of God. This is life is in these pages, you know? So I began reading that and it began to make sense and more and more sense. My, my saved moment didn't happen until I found myself in a jail cell, no clothes, everything on me is stripped away. And all I have is a wrap around me. And I remember realizing, boy, this is it. This is as low as a person can go. And I said, God, I said, I know kind of what led me to this point. I said, well, I need your help. I said, I give this life to you. I can't go on anymore. This is it. I'm broken. I'm completely broken. I can't do anything more. And my wife told me, she said, that was the moment you became born again. It was that moment. Because think about it. I was literally reduced to almost to the point like when I was an infant. I mean, I'm curled up. It's cold and I'm curled up literally in the fetal position trying to keep warm. And I gave my life to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I need you. I can't do this anymore. I can't rely on just myself. And you know, from that moment forward, my life began an upward trajectory. Here I am five years later. Married to a beautiful woman. I own my own home. Been gainfully employed for about four years now. Amen. That's a blessing. I mean, that's a huge blessing. Exactly. Yes. And it's also a powerful testimony. And I like to share a story with, with some people. I like to share some stories with that sort of people who don't know Christ yet. Yes. So that they can understand that it don't matter how bad you've been, how low uh -huh. you've been, it's thrown yes, down to the pavement. Yes. God will raise you up. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. He will. <clears throat> and so that ties into the letter H, where I just said the word of the Bible makes more sense. You're able to extract more wisdom and knowledge from it. Mm -hmm. And that was very true in my case. And I'm sure it was also true in all of your cases, yes. you know. Amen. We, you know, all of us. We're all called by God at different points in our life. Remember the, the parable that Jesus taught about the uh, the workers, how some workers were called early in the day and other workers were called almost at the end of the day. There was only like an hour of daylight left to work. But yet they all got the same reward, right? 
That's ex that was exactly a picture of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Some of us come to Christ very early in life. We walk with him a very long time. Others of us come to Christ, like in my case, the halfway point through your life. And then others will come to Christ, like the gentleman we learned about in church, I think it was last week. He's 83 years old, and he came to Christ. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I thought of that parable in my head. I thought to myself, wow, that, that parable that Jesus taught all that time ago is so true. Mm -hmm. There are many of us who, who are in the kingdom, and we all came into his arms at yes. different points in our life. But the reward is the same. Mm -hmm. We get to spend eternity with Christ, the Son of God. And the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit who created us and made this whole world. Amen. amen. I think that's beautiful. Yes. So let's take a look at uh, the last scripture that's on here. It's Ephesians chapter 4, 22 to 24. And this is kind of like an overall picture of what is expected of us. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, that's your old flesh, your old self, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. The journey to holiness is never ending in this life. Amen. We don't achieve the true holiness until we go to meet the Lord mm -hmm. above in the heavens and we get our glorified body. Mm -hmm. So what we ask is, we, uh, we should always be praying to, to Jesus and to the Lord to always help us grow in holiness and keep bearing fruit for him. And we know that uh, if we're faithful, we know that nothing is impossible for Christ. Yes. Absolutely. And remember always that uh, even though we may stumble, and the enemy is always going to be there whispering in our ear and trying to tempt us and trying to get us to stumble and also trying to say, look at what you just did. You know, how's God going to forgive you when you're saved? Ah, you know, he does that. He does that to us. He does it to me all the time. Whispers in my ear. Every time I get ticked off at work. And believe me, I admit it, I get ticked off at work a lot. <laughs> and then I feel bad because I know that that's not Christ-like behavior that I'm demonstrating. And then I have the enemy whisper my ear, look what you did, Bill. Look how mad you got. That's all your pride, isn't it? Yeah. Wallowing it. No. Mm -hmm. And then I push that away. And I ask God, I say, God, I know I just messed up. Please help me to be better than what I am. Right. I ask Jesus every day, help me to be just a, even a little bit better than I was the day before. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm finding that since I've been praying that and I've been being more active in scriptures and in, and in church and everything else, I see that happening. Things that used to make me just irate at work don't even register a blip on the radar screen anymore. Yes. Now, you know what that means also? It means that every time you would find a new threshold, the enemy's going to try to invent another threshold that you're going to strip over. You always need to be on guard for that. Always be on guard for that. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll close this message in prayer. Jesus Christ, we need you. We need you whether the times are good or whether the times are tough. We need your grace. We need your peace. We need your mercy. Without you, we are nothing. We are, as the scriptures say, a clanging gong. An empty shell. Yes. But with you, we are full of life. With you, we have hope. Mm -hmm. With you, there is the hope of eternity with you. Amen. And that's just about the best reason in the world, Lord, is to be with you in your presence for all eternity. To have that access to you in your presence and your wisdom and all the things that you want to teach us. Help us, Lord, in this journey. Keep us on guard for the snares of the enemy. We have confidence in our salvation to know that we can never be snatched out of your hand. Yes. But we do know that our daily peace can be robbed from the enemy if we permit him. Yes. So, Lord, I ask you, give us the strength mm -hmm. and the courage to withstand those slings and arrows that the enemy throws at us. Yes. Give us the ability to also further discern your word that we may grow in wisdom. And let us never forget to imitate the things that you did. You asked us to help those in need, to feed those who are hungry, to give clothing to those who have none, to give shelter to those who have none, to lend assistance where it's needed. Yes. And to always do this with the right mind, mm -hmm. that we're doing it to please you. It's not because we're seeking a blessing or because we want to feel good and fuzzy inside. 
we do it because we want to please you, Jesus. Because we love you and we're grateful for the salvation you've offered to us. Amen. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, Thank you. Use your cell phones. Use your cell phone and then uh Google. Every day with Jesus is yes, sweeter yeah. than the day before. Before. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day with Jesus. The title is Every Day with Jesus. Go go into the field of the lyrics. There's the Wi Fi in here. happy also if we he lost his followers because what the devil wants is he wants more people to go to hell mm -hmm. and God's desire is for all people to be in heaven so there are two forces fighting that's why Modi was asked he was asked 
pastor body why is it that since that day that I have heard you preach him and I accepted Christ as my savior why is it that I always feel two dogs fighting inside of me and so the evangelist just look at him you told me dogs two dogs are fighting my question is, who wins? Who wins? And he was also very uh, active and immediate respect. The dog that won the battle is the dog that I always feel. Exactly. <coughs> A fight of two dogs, one is complete in food, and the other one is no food. Who do who do you think will win? It's the one with complete food. Same with us. It depends on what nature are we feeding always. And the Bible encourages us, feed the new nature. For you to become victorious, feed the new nature. You say, how? The word of God is a food. That's why we encourage Surin. And Bill said, Bible is not new to him. Probably he saw the Bible, probably he reads the Bible before, but it's his his. His outlook is different. It's just an old book with no meaning at all. Because what? Who he was was still the old. And now that he is a new, all the old book became a new book. Amen. This is the God, God the place, you see. The old book became a new book. book. Because his outlook now is different. Then, when we read, we're feeding our souls because it's God talking to us. Well, the one reading, but the one speaking is God. And He wants also us to talk to Him. How do we talk to Him? You pray. That is why prayer is not a memorized prayer, it's not memorizing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's not a prayer. That's the, what's that? That's a recitation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like the Philippines, I plead. I love the Philippines. It is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Wow. God did not tell us to do the same. Let's talk to him. It's like me talking to my father it's like any of us very happy if our son talks to us but supposing your son will not talk to you are you happy oh, of course you're not so talking to god in prayer listening from god reading the word then a lot that we have studied you see we become aggressive Sharing the love of Christ to others. That's one way of making our brand new person clean and active every day. So the song says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. You see? Now, uh, we have passed already our opening basket. Yeah, we have yes. already done. It's already and done. Right there. There's uh, words that we need to say yeah. uh, for uh, What's that? Um, <laughs> what are you <laughs> so, Before that, I will share a little yeah. bit about uh, yeah. offering and giving. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, we don't have yeah, we have more. 
supposed yeah, to be we got weak. another one. Supposed to be <laughs> weak. Next time, next time we need to hold our envelope before we read this one. But before we read this one, I will share. We need um, one at the end. No, I already did. I will I share about the, how guns work in our life. Thank you. Um, I know every one of us like we work so hard and we have a lot of things to pay. And when I was in South Korea, I was working for five years, and my mom had a lot of debt. And we owe a lot to, to the, the market, and then sometimes the owner of that store, they kick my mom because, you know, we have a long list of debt. And what I did when I was in South Korea, I was helping like that kind of this ministry. I was not really more in Christian that time because as I heard Pastor uh, Bill, I called Pastor Bill because he's preaching, that if we are a believer or follower with Jesus, we are a new Christians and we, if we read the Bible, then we need to follow what he said. So what I did, I support a ministry down to somewhere in Cebu and more, most my money goes to the ministry and I have less money. Sometimes I don't have money to pay the, you know, the train or the subway. It's called subway in, um, in South Korea or here we don't have subway or bus because, you know, we have own cars. But of course, most of us, they work hard because we have to pay more and more and more like insurance and everything. But my, I, what I share today is if you if we build our uh, money to the kingdom of God and you don't know the future that all our our uh, debt will pay off after five years my mom paid off all his debt and I have new house three story in Philippines that I didn't spend any cents because of what i did if we if we spend more or if we um, do something if we if you have um, a goal that we need to if we have a goal like we pay something we have a problem then we need to spend more time with jesus and support the ministry yes, it's got god how to return sure. our money that's how our that's how uh, our blessings will come back to us and that's how i share today and and after that, we will read this uh, words here. As we receive today, offering, we are declaring in faith, jobs and better jobs, raises and benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, sales and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, Days paid off, expenses decrease, blessing increase, and thank the Lord for meeting all my financial needs that we may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's how we give. If we give that, then we will receive more blessing and our, you know, will be increased. You know, our expense or something like that. <laughs> so that's if we build into the kingdom of God, that's how God will bless us in our, you know, in our offering, our love gift, because we help to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. All right. You know, when God bless, He will do it in His own way. <laughs> Last night, I received a text message. I'm somebody that I did not meet. She lives in California. Then she was in the hospital confined, serious illness. And the one who takes care was a member in our church in San Carlos City, who married to a, cop, a guy from California. And then offered her that if you need prayer, we will call out my pastor in the Philippines. He is in Florida. So I received a call and asking for prayer. 
and it was a serious sickness that the doctors were wondering. <coughs> and I prayed, then time times she will call. I <coughs> pray. Last night I received a text message, Pastor Tim, this is a test. Uh, mail I sent $100 through what's that? Yeah. through yeah. Zill yeah. uh, because one time she asked me <coughs> how could I help then I said is your wife uh, do you have a sale? I don't know then I told my wife and then I gave by the number of my wife to her then my wife, wife was at work, I texted her, kindly check because that, that woman texted me and she checked and one hundred dollars was there. Amen. You see, when yes. God bless, yes. you yes. do not know that's only hundred dollars, but yes. that's already a hundred dollars. Yes. This morning when I preached in Jacksonville, they gave me an envelope and while Driving, I told my wife, I told Lunga, kindly open the envelope. And it is it was one hundred and twenty dollars. So if we read the scripture how much God yes. God's portion mm -hmm. it's I received already mm -hmm. two hundred and twenty two. So I gave God's portion is twenty two, ten percent of yes. what we have. That's only the beginning yes. of the giving. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, give more. Mm -hmm. Give more for the kingdom. Yes. And you do not know. Mm -hmm. It's like planting seeds when you harvest Amen. a Amen. lot of seeds. Amen. Uh, That's, a promise. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. But do not expect. Yes. Because you do not know. Somebody is outside look, looking for somebody. And then, yesterday, there's an, a couple that I tried to disciple, and the guy shared me his life. Mm, it's, a, it's a difficult life. When he was seven years old, he had an accident that almost killed him. He operated. Here, here, this one is cut, the, broke, the bone was broken, so the doctor has to remove, extract bone from his hips, and then replace the bone here. So I saw it's very small bone here. That's not the original bone. And he's experienced difficulty in life. And while he was sharing, tears flowing. And God moved me. Oh, yeah. Do something. Do something. I had thirty dollars in my wallet. I shared to him, brother, this is from God. God give me the joy. God give me the happiness. And he helped me. Today my experience, I was preaching about Thanksgiving, because it's not Thanksgiving Sunday. Then the church bought a new laptop for the pastor. And it was only $170. So I asked, where did you buy that? The Beast Buy. I remember this Beast Buy here. And you know, last Black Friday, I wanted to go there because I want to buy a computer. I to buy a laptop. I said, oh, thank you, thank you. This is Beast Buy in Daytona. I'll buy while driving, the pastor called my wife because I was driving. Sister Nida, Sister Nida, I have something to tell you that two members <laughs> will buy laptop for Pastor Tim. Wow, so I said, oh, I was able to hold my tears. I said, Lord, thank you very much. Hallelujah. That's the joy of serving. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, I would like to remind that the tithes and offerings we gather, I do not get anything. 
because by law, I'm not allowed by law. In fact, our congregation is not registered yet with the government because I have no license yet. Then I consulted a lot of pastors and I shared it to you first Sunday of October that any amount we receive, we will use it for the group, uh, any activity, group activity, and sit aside, identify pastors that are hard working in the Philippines. That I used to help 1,500 pesos every month. To them trying to raise thirty dollars each, and by God's grace, God is faithful. I can I raise a little, but there are still more. So I shared to you, and we agreed that we identified ten pastors, and we decided to send them thirty dollars a month. Uh, and then there are another two outreaches that our main church is starting opening in San Carlos area in the mountains that I support and we support $30 a month. So I keep sending. And then uh, Amparo is also helping a pastor in the Philippines. Evelyn is also helping a pastor in the Philippines. Uh, according to Evelyn, he will, he will, she will include it to the amount that will be sending to one pastor I delegated in the Philippines. That is the one uh, responsible of sending because if we send here by uh, once and then uh, it's cheaper. Here every time you send how much? We pay eight dollars. Eight dollars. Sometimes Western Union is ten. So sometimes eight, they vary. But then when you send by a Palawan, now it increases. Before it was only 20, then it became 30, and now it's 50. But what is 50 pesos? That's only one dollar. Now if we send direct to them, oh, that's 10 dollars. How about 80? Eighty dollars and can support almost three. So I just said one. That's what I do, and he's the one responsible. Those who are part, he will send it by allow one, and then those who are close, yes, he has, has to text them, and they meet together, fellowship together, and then distribute, give the support. That's what we're doing. So starting December. Uh, we will delegate probably our treasurer to do it. It's not me sending. It's the treasurer. And I understand she, you are leaving. Yeah, I'm going to Philippines by this December 12th. So, so you can carry the money so that we don't need to yeah, pay the charge. Here's the... <laughs> So she will, she will still send because well, she is in Manila. Yeah, yeah. If you have chicas in Philippines, yeah. just free charge. What you do is you send before you leave. Yeah. Say you send before you leave, and I told already that one in church that it's not me anymore sending. It's our treasurer. And in case of her incapability, our secretary will send. That's it. So we'll attach home, whatever the charges, so that we have a group. Yes. Every time we send, yes. you know, how much, yes. what day. So Amparo, the auditor, yeah. will uh, <laughs> sign yeah. approval of sending. That's, let's start that way, the correct way. And help me pray that someday I could have a license, I'll be a license and an ordained minister here in America. That's my dream. Oh, gosh, you're mm -hmm. low. I just
No. Automatic. You, in a minute, they can do it. No, it's good that way, but, but, but they charge they charge to do it. Eight dollars. Oh, that's it. Sometimes it's lower, uh, and then uh, first I compare. Now Ria, we found Ria, and it's first for Ria. Ria, uh, Ria, Remit Place, Remit very low. Uh, and then Western Union is a little low, and then what's the other? Manigram is lower than Western Union. And then remitly, I mean, Ria, it's by, or by Walmart, it's Walmart to Walmart, but they have also agents in the building, like Palawa and Lonely Air, BDO, or you can, you can even deposit, if you have BDO account, you can deposit to Ria, you just pay $8. That's a... Uh, what I found, but if you know of more uh, less There's expensive, five dollars charge in even big amount in Wells Fargo faster. If someone has Wells Fargo here, but I yeah, don't know, but, but there's no like, branch. Any, because there's a branch, uh, uh, that that you can deposit in any uh, bank in Philippines. Huh? If you have Wells Fargo here, then you go to the Wells Fargo bank and then send this money, they only charge $5. My wife has a Wells Fargo account. Uh, we'll try to explore. Well, there's one Fargo in the Philippines. I think the Philippines is not going to charge you. Know. Just want to get a gun. Uh, so that's the yeah. situation. Okay. Yeah. More questions? Zoom? Yeah, Zoom. Zoom also. Prayer for the food. $5. And they can pick it up from any SMB. They charge $5. Yeah. 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 Three dollars. Oh, yes. Every million. How, how, you can pick it up from How much the church? Five dollars. Five dollars. What then? Yeah. It's yeah. up to so you how much you send. Is the limit is no. Zoom. 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 Always Zoom. depends on how much you send. Zoom. 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 Yeah. Okay, anyway, that's the responsibility of all her. As long as there is Palawan, this is a lawyer, it doesn't matter. If you could find the lowest cost, let's do it. All right. Uh, shall we say? Uh, more questions? I just want to say one more thing. She could have always fired her. That's that the American bank. Account. No, that's the American bank. No, it's the American bank. No, it's the American bank. No, No, it's the American bank. No, it's the American bank. No, it's No, it's the American bank. 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 More lower, praise God. There's a song, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. After that, let's pray for the poor.
Father, for this heavenly hour. Thank you for your word that we have heard. May those words will always remind us that the Holy Spirit is in us. The Lord is in us. Directing our day to day to life. Help us, Lord Jesus, that ourselves be crucified always, like Paul said. I am crucified with Christ, never selling. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which now I live in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Make us victorious. Make us more active, faithful, and strong while waiting for the soon return of our Savior. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for the brethren. Thank you even for the grace that we are about to partake. Sanctify all the food that we are about to eat. Bless this and give this to people who are in need. Hallelujah. And yet they do not have. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.